Hello. Today's business world is changing very rapidly, and we all have to run just to keep up with it. But one thing that hasn't changed is the importance of communication skills. No matter what field you go into, you'll have to be able to communicate well to succeed. Hey, Elaine. Oh, hey, Cliff. Yeah. I wonder if you could help me out with something? Sure, I'll try. Well, it's this email. Bradford sent it over to our office in Japan, and I just found out that the vice president there was really offended by it, but I can't see anything wrong with it. Can you take a look, see if you can figure out the problem? Sure, I'll give it a try. Oh, thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> see you later. Bye. That's one example of our changing worlds. Business now is global. This company has offices in 14 different countries. To communicate in such an international environment, you have to know about different cultures and be sensitive and tolerant of other people's customs. Now, see this empty office? The executive vice president used to work there. Now, we don't have any executive vice presidents. Like many other companies, we've flattened out our management hierarchy. Now, we can react much more quickly to market changes. But this also means that everybody in the company has to be a good communicator, since everybody is part of the decision making. Hey. Hi, Cliff. Coffee? Always. Thanks. Listen, I just sent out an email. I have invited Wei Lin to join our expansion strategy team. He'll be able to contribute a, an IT perspective. Sounds great. Okay. So, I'll see you at 11. See you then. Okay. That's Jackie, my boss. We're doing a lot more team-based management than we used to, where people with different perspectives make important decisions. Now, again, communication skills are critical. Now, I'm from marketing, and Wei Lin's from information technology, but we have to be able to communicate with each other and the rest of the team. It's no secret that communication these days is more and more about technology. Our website is critical to our marketing and customer communication. And, of course, there's email. An email from Stephanie. She's working at home today. Reply, no problem. Send it to me when you're done. There. The changing work environment, that's another one. You have to communicate really well if you're working at home. Or, for that matter, if you're working in a cubicle next to dozens of other cubicles like most people in this office. You have to learn to respect this office. You have to learn to respect other people's space, need for privacy, and need to get some work done. Most people think of communication as transmitting information. However, communication is not really complete until the meaning of that information is transmitted as well. If I were to transmit information to you, but you didn't really understand what I think that information means, then I really haven't communicated with you. At its most basic, communication takes place in five steps. Communication begins when the person who originates the communication, the sender, has an idea. The sender then encodes the idea in a message. For verbal communication, this means putting the idea into words. The message then travels over a channel, such as speech, email, or a letter, and the receiver decodes the message, for example, by hearing or reading it. Finally, the receiver gives feedback about the message to the sender. Only with feedback can the sender verify that the message has been transmitted and its meaning understood. The process sounds simple, but of course it's not. The meaning of the messages is often not communicated, and the message is misunderstood. Sender and receiver may attach different meanings to the words. Uh, they may have different frames of references because of different genders and educations and cultures and so on. Watch the following scene between Elaine and Ramon. Elaine is concerned that Ramon's new secretary is using time inappropriately. See how gender values can influence communication. You know, I just came by, I just came through the lobby on my way here and doing your nails at the front desk. Okay, um... Well, I mean, can you imagine if our clients came in and saw her sitting there doing her nails or brushing her hair or... I imagine you want to have nice nails when you reach across and shake hands with somebody if you're greeting them. Well, of Makes course. And, you know, I want to look nice when I'm in the workplace, too. So sure. at I mean, you home, look great. I 
shower and I dress and I do my hair and I do my makeup and then when I come here, I, I, I work. I, I do that stuff on my own time. I think she's a great worker. I can't really fault anybody for taking care of their appearance. Is that what we're paying her for? I mean, <laughs> is, she, is she just decoration? I guess maybe in some way she's part of our image. I mean, she's the first person people meet when they walk in. Um, One or both may have poor communication skills, and gender and frame of reference differences can interfere with the transmission of meaning. In organizations, communication can be formal, such as an official memo or email, or informal, such as a casual conversation. Now, formal communication often goes up and down in organizations' chain of command, but it doesn't have to work that way. Our company actually has a written policy encouraging free and open communication among all levels. Formal communication in an organization flows downward, upward, and horizontally. Downward flow moves from decision makers down the chain of command to workers. When you have a flat hierarchy, as we do, information flows much more quickly and accurately, since it doesn't have to pass through so many layers. Upward flow of information moves up the chain of command. The key element here is trust. People who work for you need to trust that you will listen respectfully to what they say and attempt to resolve any issues. You know, I think you have a strong start. And with some tweaking, I think we'll, we'll be right on track and we'll get this cleared up. Great, thanks. All right? Okay. Yeah, I, I think, you know, Horizontal flow of you know, information like occurs strong. between employees so really at the same level. Horizontal and information and exchange and can be a good so source well. of innovation and, and problem solving. And I'm very interested in, in the employees knowing what to expect. Mm -hmm. And I wondered, um, in this, for instance, mm -hmm. this seems to be very flexible, which is great. Mm -hmm. But my concern is, will some of the employees get a little frustrated and will they be able to understand this? Will it be too flexible? How much structure is built in? And informal information flow, where you hear it through the grapevine, is a major form of communication in every organization and a very efficient one. Oh, did you hear Bradford's going to D.C. next week? Before? He's going to be testifying before a Senate subcommittee about innovations in financial services. Oh, I was about to say, what did he do? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's really excited about no, it. No, that's great. Yeah. That's great. He's got a lot, of good, uh, a lot of good ideas. Great ideas. Yeah. So exciting. Do you know what we should do? We should have him talk to Judy and put out a press release. That's not a bad idea. Yeah, it'd be good PR. A critical requirement for business is that it must be ethical. To be ethical in your business communication, you must tell the truth. Label opinions as such. Be objective. Communicate clearly and give credit to ideas that are not your own. Most companies today recognize ethical behavior as just plain good business. And as the headlines tell us, a few companies had to find that out the hard way. In this scene, Elaine is expressing her issues with David's new direct mail piece. Her ethical dilemma is that the advertising may be sending a statement that the company can't fulfill. It, it's, it feels to me like we're promising people that this is what their life is going to look like in 10 years. And oh, I, I'm just, oh, I'm think, really no, confused by that because we, you know, we can't make a promise like that. We don't know what's going to happen. Elaine, we're not promising anything. We're just saying that it's possible that you may be looking at this kind of thing out your bedroom window. That's all. We're not saying that you will be looking at it. It's an implication. That's all. Mm -hmm. I understand you're not saying this is definitely going to happen. But, I mean, isn't that what advertising does? I mean, you take the name of our company, mm -hmm. and you take a time frame, and you put this picture, and it's, yeah, it's no, like no, implying I understand. I understand that we can do saying. something that, that we... Okay, well, first thing, the advertising is just basically geared towards appealing to an individual or a market space, as you wish. It's not, it's not so much saying that, you know, if you, if you invest with us, you will have this in 10 years. What we're saying is if you invest, hopefully with us, you may have this in 10 years. We're just trying to pep it up a little bit. I mean... Now, you're really hey, savvy you... about investing, right? You know about investing. I just have a good broker. Okay. This piece... Uh -huh. It's not being sent to people who already have ocean views and fancy cars. It's being sent to people who aren't savvy about investing. Okay. Well, there are and a so number of I'm individuals just, I that... I feel so uncomfortable with okay. making those kinds of implications to people who aren't that sophisticated. All right. I'll tell you what I'll do. 
Business communicators should always act ethically, doing the right thing given the circumstances. When resolving ethical issues, consider these questions. Is the action you are considering legal? How would you see the problem if you were on the opposite side? What are some alternate solutions? Can you discuss the problem with someone whose advice you trust? How would you feel if others learned of your actions? We talk about effective communication. We tend to think about writing and speaking. But actually, most of the process of effective communication involves good listening. Now, one of the reasons I'm really lucky to have Jackie for boss is that she's a very good listener. Listening involves perception, interpretation, evaluation, and action. So, Jackie, we, we took the, uh, your advice and we, we did sort of... A listening problem. starts with perception. When Jackie listens, she tunes into you, pays attention, stays focused on what you're saying. Interpretation is when you decode the message. Like anybody, Jackie's interpretation is colored by her own frame of reference. I may be thinking of the marketing vision, she may be thinking of the marketing budget. In evaluation, the listener works to be objective about the message and to separate his or her opinions and prejudices from what the speaker is saying. And action may be simply a nod or gesture or may consist of more elaborate feedback to the message. Um, and what do these numbers refer to? Well, this is a, a population chart. So we went down uh, and sort of did, did uh, urban and rural areas um, in both uh, you know, across Europe. We'll conclude this examination of the foundations of communication with my personal favorite, nonverbal communication. I've always been fascinated by how much people can convey nonverbally. Eye contact, facial expressions, posture, and gestures can all communicate very powerfully what we think and how we feel. So, uh, yeah, the only thing is I want to talk to you about taking some time off. Great. We can also communicate negative uh, information yeah, nonverbally. For example, when we are impatient or annoyed. Watch how David acts non-verbally as Ramon well, explains the complexities of taking time off. Time. You can only... what, I, what I can tell you though is that the formula is as it stands pretty clear and, and actually um, you're a first year hire yeah. so uh, let me just bring up the... Uh, in your first year you get 1.5 vacation days for each two months. That's you. So if you have that amount of time left, you can use the days that you have up until now, but you can't take extra ones. Uh, let me just go down a couple points. I don't know if you read it in your employee handbook, but it's all right there on page 17. People who are successful in the business world learn to be aware of the nonverbal messages they might be sending. Days for each two months in years two through four. Here are some techniques for improving nonverbal communication skills in the workplace. Establish and maintain eye contact. Use posture to show interest. Lean forward, sit erect, and look alert. Reduce physical barriers between you and the person speaking. Probe for more information. Ensure your appearance is professional and positive. Today, more than ever, your success in the business world depends on your ability to communicate. Business transactions carry with them a lot of information, which you have to send and decode. And you can't afford for the meaning of the information to be lost. Business communications can be either verbal or nonverbal, formal or informal, and is transmitted over a number of channels, including telephones, computer networks, pieces of paper, and face-to-face -face conversations. You have to be able to speak clearly, write well, and most importantly, listen closely. Good communication can be difficult at first, but gets easier with practice. And once you've mastered communication skills, you'll be on the road to success.